welcome to Math with Mr. Todd. I'm excited to bring you some new material this week on the study of geometry. So in case you don't know what geometry is, geometry is the study of shapes and lines and angles um, and things like that. So this week we're diving into identifying different shapes and using their attributes or how many sides and how many angles they have to determine what type of shape that is. So before we get going with looking at the shapes, I wanted to go over some important words with you first, okay? The first word I want to go over is polygon. And a polygon is a flat shape that has straight sides and is completely closed in. All the sides meet at some point. So if I'm thinking about what kind of shapes I know that are polygons, a square is a polygon, a rectangle is a polygon, a circle is not a polygon. And a circle is not a polygon because it does not have straight sides. So a polygon is a shape with as many sides as you would like, they have to be straight, and they have to meet at some point. So like, if you were thinking about a square, and one of the corners was missing, and you thought like, ooh, like a bug could crawl inside that square, it wouldn't be a polygon because it would have that opening, and a polygon is a closed figure. So again, polygon is straight sides, it's flat, so it's not a cube, it's not a cone, it's not a three-dimensional shape, flat, straight sides, closed shape. The last word I want to look at before we get into our different types of shape is angle. So an angle is when two sides meet, and it's that space between the two sides. So like here, these two sides of this rectangle are meeting, so this area right here would be the angle. So if I was looking at this rectangle here, I can say it has one, two, three, four sides, and one, two, three, four angles, because that's where the sides meet and their space is between them. I can also classify this as a polygon because it's a flat shape, it has straight sides, and it is completely closed. So. Let's dive in to some of the shapes that we're going to talk about this okay, week. Okay, friends, the first shape we're going to talk about is a triangle. Now, I know you're thinking, Mr. Ty, we've already learned triangles in first grade, and that's probably true, um, but we're just going to review it together so that you're sure that we know exactly what a triangle is. So you're going to notice that all these words that I hold up have one part of the word that's underlined, and that is a secret part of the word that can help us understand what the word actually means if we forget. So I have the part TRI, T-R-I underline, and I have it underlined because that part of the word means three. So let's think of some other words that start with TRI, like tricycle. It's a bike with three wheels. So sometimes a word starts, the prefix has a meaning that helps us understand the whole word. So this means three angles, so a shape with three angles, triangle, three angles. So this is an example of a triangle. Okay, it has one, two, three sides. It is completely closed, there's no openings, and it has one, two, three angles. So that's why this is a triangle, because it is a polygon and it has three sides and three angles. All right, friends, the next one we're gonna talk about is a pentagon. And the pentagon is actually one of my favorite shapes, and you're probably thinking, Mr. Todd, why did you skip four-sided shapes? Because the pentagon is a five-sided shape. And that's because we're gonna do four-sided shapes at the very end, okay? So just hang tight, we're gonna get to four-sided shapes. A pentagon is a shape with five sides, and I really like pentagons because there is a famous building in Washington, D.C. that's called the Pentagon, and it is shaped like a pentagon. So here's a picture of a pentagon. So a pentagon has five sides and five angles. The root word penta means five. So here is an example of a pentagon. And if you look closely, the pentagon has one, two, 
three, four, five sides, and one, two, three, four, five angles. So a pentagon is a polygon that has five sides. The next polygon that I want to talk about is a hexagon. And if you notice, I have underlined in blue hexa. And hexa means six. So a hexagon is a polygon with six sides. So here's an example of a hexagon. And if we count together, one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And one, two, three, four, five, six angles. So a hexagon is a polygon that has six sides and six angles. Our next shape that we're going to talk about is an octagon. And I have the word octa underlined, or the um, prefix octa underlined. Now, thinking of a word that I know that starts with octa is octopus. And we know that an octopus is an animal that has eight legs. So an octagon is a polygon that has eight sides. So here's an example of an octagon. And let's count together to make sure that this is an octagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. So again, an octagon, think of the word octopus that has eight legs, an octagon has eight sides and eight angles. Now, you're probably saying, Mr. Todd, you have made it through an entire lesson on geometry and have not mentioned a square or a rectangle one time. And that's because I wanted to wait till the very end to show you this super long word that I think is going to be new to you. And this word is a quadrilateral. Can you say it after me? Quadrilateral. Good. So a quadrilateral is a shape, a polygon, with four sides. Now, you're probably saying, Mr. Todd, why can't we just call it a square or a rectangle? Because there are more quadrilaterals out there than just a square and a rectangle. A quadrilateral is a polygon straight sides, closed, flat, that has four sides. And it could look super wonky, and it's still a quadrilateral. So we think about the root word quad, which means four. Um, so like if you quadruple something, you're going to times it by four. And so we're going to look at some quadrilaterals together today. And remember, quadrilaterals are just polygons that have four sides. So let's start with some of the quadrilaterals that you already know. This is a square. It is a quadrilateral because it has one, two, three, four sides and four angles. Okay. Another quadrilateral that you're probably pretty familiar with is a rectangle. So this is a rectangle and it is a quadrilateral because it has one, two, three, four sides. Now... Let's get into some of the other ones that you may not be so sure of and maybe that you haven't heard. This is also a quadrilateral because it has one, two, three, four sides. This is not a square. This is not a rectangle. This is a trapezoid, and it is just a quadrilateral, but the name of this particular quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Okay. I know that you're thinking, now, Mr. Todd, that's probably a diamond, and you could call it a diamond. Um, it's a quadrilateral, and it's called a rhombus, and it's a rhombus um, because it kind of looks like a kite. So a rhombus has one, two, three, four sides, but another word that we, another name that we can call a rhombus is a quadrilateral. And then finally, I have one more to share with you. This one goes this way. It kind of looks like a rectangle that's been like, kind of like shifted a little bit. It's not a rectangle. It is a quadrilateral. It is a polygon, and it's called a parallelogram. It has one, two, three, four sides. It is a quadrilateral. It falls into that family, but the official name of this shape is a parallelogram. So for this week, you've got 
two things to do with geometry. Number one, it's find the pair or find the quadrilateral, and it's a page with a whole bunch of shapes, and you have to drag the circle over to circle just the quadrilateral, just the shapes that have four sides. The second thing you're going to do is there's little like riddles. It would say like I have I am a shape and I have three sides and three angles and you would have to pull over the name and then the picture of the shape over to the answer. I know that you guys are going to do a great job. You guys are doing awesome on Google Classroom. This is kind of an easy week in math because you probably already know some of this. So I know that you're going to be very successful this week.